We all love the vehicles that we drive. Whether it's a 2030-something SpaceX 9000 or a rusty Chevy from the 60s, we can't help but feel at least somewhat attached to the hunks of metal that can get us from point A to point B in mere minutes, a feat only thought accomplishable via rail just over 100 years ago. These machines don't come without their flaws, however. Besides needing expensive fuel, as well as regular maintenance to operate, these complex devices are prone to break down if even one thing goes wrong. And if you break down in the wrong place without the proper equipment, you may find yourself relying on your local insurance and tow companies to get yourself out of the pickle you've just found yourself in. But what happens if those companies decide to be a little stingy when it comes to your rescue? For context, I drive a 2005 Mazda B3000, a very simple vehicle that does its job well. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles that today's vehicles have, but to be honest, I prefer it that way. Most people my age want the newest car with neon lights and the nitro to outrun the flash, as well as a hundred other party tricks to show off all they are draw. Me though, I just want a vehicle that can get me to my destination safely while also having decent storage and good fuel economy, something the B3000 does wonderfully. Unfortunately, no matter how modern or simple your vehicle is, the fact of the matter is that the only constant in this world is change. Our story begins with a phone call. See, one of my close family members went under a very intense surgery that day, and when they woke up, they asked my father to call me and ask if I could visit them that day. Of course, my answer was yes, and I told them I would be down there within the hour, because this was the PERFECT TIME TO TEMPT FATE! So, I started making my way to the hospital in my vehicle, and apart from a few speed demon morons going 80 and a 30, no, I am not exaggerating, this trip was mostly uneventful. That is, until I got about a quarter of a mile away from the turn into the hospital grounds. I pressed on my accelerator, and... It's not working. I pressed down on it hard, but still nothing. I was losing speed. Thinking quickly, I immediately turn on my e-lights and pull over to the side of the road. Luckily, there was a bike lane, followed by a little more concrete before the road ends and the sidewalk begins, so my truck could comfortably fit on the side of the road without blocking traffic. Whew, that was close. But now what? My car can't move, and I have no equipment in my truck. Even if I did, I don't know jack about repairing vehicles, so manual repairs were not an option. With no other ideas, I called my father again. I explained the situation and asked what I should do. Luckily, my older brother was just about ready to leave the hospital, so my father sent him to check out the situation. My brother arrived about 10 minutes later, and he had me call up the insurance company my family was signed up for. I don't want to use the insurance company's real name, so I'll just call this company... Bluebread. We called Blue Bread, and they said they will find a tow truck and get them out here as soon as they could. Not too difficult in theory, we're smack dab in the middle of town, and the place we want to get the truck towed to is less than 3 miles from here. Not a tall order if you ask me. An hour goes by, and still no truck. I checked the website, and it says they are still trying to locate the tow truck to help me, but due to staff shortages in my area, this is taking longer than expected. Please be patient. Now, visitation hours for the hospital were limited and were going to end in less than an hour. With this in mind, I called off the rescue via the website and my brother and I pushed the truck into the nearby parking lot so that it was not in the road anymore. From there, my brother car pulled me to the hospital and dropped me off outside. I legged it into the hospital and was able to see my close family member with around 15 minutes to spare. The next day, my father car pulls me to the hospital and we visit with family until around lunchtime. Then we leave to go deal with my truck. We get to the parking lot and we initiate the rescue. Again, we get the whole staff shortage, please be patient, blah 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 blah. So, we decide to be patient and wait for the tow truck. About a half hour later, we get the message that a tow company was assigned to our job. Great. Progress. Now, it shouldn't take too long for the truck to get here, right? One hour. Two hours. Three hours. FOUR HOURS LATER, AND STILL NO TRUCK. At this point, both my father and I were getting fed up waiting in his vehicle for a truck that has taken a sweet time when we could be with our family right now. We called the towing company and asked what was going on and why the tow truck we were assigned four hours ago still hadn't arrived yet. They gave us a spiel about one of their trucks being assigned to the police force and the other one was still out doing its jobs. Then they said it could be at least another three hours before the tow truck arrives. Hearing this, we called back Bluebread and asked if they could get us another tow company to do this. They at first offered up a company that was readily available, but we would have had to pay an extra $300 to get them out here. Not an option. We have insurance for a reason, and one of our close family members just went through a massive surgery. We're not in the position to just throw away 300 bucks to move a broken down vehicle less than 3 miles. Then they said they would call around and assign a new company to us and to stand by. Then they hung up. 
With that, my father and I went back to the hospital to visit with our family while also keeping tabs on my phone to see what company we get. About a half hour later, I get a message. Guess who was assigned to us? The same company who said they couldn't get to us for at least three more hours. At this point, my father took over negotiations and called both the towing company and Blue Bread while I stayed with our family. About 20 minutes later, he comes back. Long story short, Blue Bread called the same towing company again, and despite their protests, they were saddled with our job again. That was when my father figured out what was going on. See, when a tow company gets a job via an insurance company, they don't get as much money as they normally do just doing the job straight out of the people's pockets. Since one tow truck was out helping the police force, and the other one had to keep the company afloat by doing higher paying jobs and putting jobs like ours on the back burner. If you need a reason for near anything in this world, all you gotta do is follow the green. With that, we called off the rescue for a second time, and we once again left my vehicle in the parking lot overnight. The next day, my father and I got up at the crack of dawn and got to work. My father contacts our insurance company and gets a third rescue up and running. Then we both set out in different vehicles, agreeing to meet up at my broken down truck. I forgot to mention that our household has three vehicles in it. We have my small but simple truck, my father's SUV, which is used as the main household vehicle, and the big truck, which is used for heavy jobs and camping. I took out the big truck that day so I could run some errands later, but on the way, I realized it was low on fuel. I stopped at a gas station, bankrupted my family for half a tank of fuel, and then got back to my little truck. However, my father had yet to arrive, which I thought was weird since we both left the house around the same time. Where was he? Well, on the way to my truck, my father started getting the same message of staff shortages and please be patient and blah 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 blah! That was when my father decided he had had enough with Blue Bread and the towing company and that it was time for plan B. He remembered how I took out the big truck that day and knew I would be at the small truck when he got there. So, he came up with a plan. About 15 minutes after I arrived, my father finally got to the parking lot wielding a tow strap and a dream. We got to work. Positioning the big truck in front of the smaller truck, my father hooks up the tow strap. Then, he gets in the big truck while I get into the little truck. Anyone keep your truck out how many times I said truck? We called each other on our phones and coordinated with each other. The goal is to keep a good amount of attention on the strap as we make our way to the repair shop. This meant my father had to communicate with me when he was going to slow down or stop since I still had control of my brakes, just not my gas. With our plans set into place, it was time to go. My father starts moving and effortlessly pulls me behind him. Keeping in good communication the whole time, we slowly make our way to the repair shop, much to the dismay of the speed demons that couldn't get around us. Telling each other about starts, stops, and changes in our speed, we made our way to the shop. Unfortunately, at the very last turn into the parking lot, I bugged up and accidentally ran over the strap. The thing held, but we are not going to use that thing for any future towing jobs. Still, better a $35 tow strap than a $300 tow truck. When we got there, a man who worked for the company helped me push the truck the last few feet into the parking space. Shout out to him and the repair company, by the way, who got the little truck repaired in just a couple of days. The company is actually owned by a family member of ours, so we knew we could trust them. Unlike some certain insurance slash towing companies. <coughs> Turns out, the problem was a faulty fuel injector slash pump, which was not feeding enough fuel into my engine and thus caused it to stall out with no chance of starting up again. After a couple of days, the little truck was back up and running, and I was glad to be driving it again. While the experience itself sucked, it highlighted to me how you should always have a second plan in place in case your contacts decide to be stingy with you. How's the old saying go? If you want something done right, um, don't get morons to do it for you. In all seriousness though, there was an odd satisfaction just towing the truck ourselves rather than leaving it in the hands of a corporation who obviously didn't want to help us unless they got bored. After that day, I got an emergency kit for my truck, including a toolbox, some jumper cables, and a tow strap, just in case. Testing. One, two, three. Perfect. <clears throat> For context, I drive a 2005 Mazda 3... Ah, restart. <clears throat> With this in mind, I called off the rescue via the website, and my brother and I pushed the tr... tr ah! Fuck. 
My father contacts our insurance company and gets a third rescue up and running. Then we both set out to the... Uh, and the big truck, which is used for heavy jobs and camping. Uh, holy f However, my father had yet to arrive, which I thought was weird since... BRAIN! What the f***? What the hell, Brain? Now is not the time to be thinking about tomorrow's stream. Just focus!